This was the first time I'd seen my dad cry in my life. It was May of 2010, working my summer job as a lifeguard, living at home with my parents. And this day happened to be just one of those days where it seemed like everything was going wrong. One thing after another, piling up, the stress just building. And I knew the second I walked in the door, because I was driving home, it was all just gonna evaporate. I'd come in, I'd say, hey mom, I'd give her a hug. Dad be in the living room in his chair. Hey Bri, how was your day? Go give him a hug. And when dinner time rolled around, we'd get up, we'd fill our plates with food, we'd go into the living room and do one of our favorite things together, which was watch a movie. The stress is evaporating and I'm in one of my happy places. And at one point, my dad went up to check on my grandfather who was taking a shower. He'd been living with us for about 10 years at that point. He was 83 now, so he needed a little more help getting around. So about a minute after dad got up, we're sitting there, peace, silence, and serenity. And all of that shattered in an instant. Before I knew it, I'd grabbed the cordless phone and I was running up the stairs. I turned into the bathroom and when I got in, I saw he had pulled his father's naked, still dripping wet body into his lap and was holding him. My grandfather's arms were draped back, his head was back, his mouth was open. And when all the emotions were rising, it was like my mind split down the middle. There were only two choices I had at that time. And I knew no matter which of those two I chose, my life was gonna change forever. I knew that in that moment I had a choice between action and inaction. Have you ever been at a time in your life where it was so crystal clear that you had two choices? For you, it might not have been a life-threatening emergency. For you, it might have been that moment when you finally said, I'm done and I'm walking out. You said, I'm leaving this job. I'm not staying in this unhealthy relationship. When you finally decided to say, I love you and I'm ready for this. When you finally decided to look in the mirror for yourself and say, today is the day and we're doing it. But that day, I decided to take action. So I said, dad, we need to get him flat. Mom, here's the phone, call 911, tell them where we are, tell them what happened. We lift my grandfather's still dripping wet body naked out and lay him flat on the ground. I know I need to check his vitals, so I come down. I put my head by his mouth to listen and feel for breathing. I'm looking down the plane of his chest to see if his chest is rising and falling and rising and falling. And then I take my two fingers to his carotid artery to feel for a heartbeat. And as I'm doing my vital check, I'm down there. There's no breath. There's no movement in his chest. But there was the slightest little heartbeat still pumping. So I got down and start giving rescue breaths. I'm down there, my body is shaking. It feels like I can't keep going, but I know this is all I can do until someone else, an EMT, a doctor gets here. I have to keep going, but my arms are shaking, my legs are shaking, and I'm gonna keep doing it the best I can until I collapse. And then finally, after what felt like 30 or 40 minutes, I was tapped on the shoulder and the EMT is there. I tried to save a man's life that day, but as the head EMT came downstairs and explained that he had had a massive heart attack. He had likely died instantaneously. And that the heartbeats that I'd felt were nothing more than an echo or an aftershock. It felt like I'd failed. I hadn't saved anybody. Until later that night, when my dad looked at me and he said, Brian, if you hadn't been there, I wouldn't have known what to do. And for the rest of my life, I would have doubted that if I'd only known what to do, that my dad would still be alive today. Because you were here and you acted and you didn't hesitate, I know it was his time and I can let him go in peace. Sometimes you'll save exactly who you intend to. Sometimes someone you didn't even see or didn't expect will benefit from your efforts. And sometimes, the person you save will be yourself. And I learned one of the most important lessons I've ever learned. You never know whose life you might save by choosing to act.